It's Friday and we are low on fuel. Well, obviously as the title shows, this video is going to be about why you should buy a new over a used car. Um, but I also, before we get started, I have a couple updates. First update, uh, a while ago I made a video uh, on getting my own TV show. If you're not familiar with that whole story, um, just click the link in the description below to kind of view that video first, and then you'll understand uh, what I'm talking about. So take a look at that. But the update there is, spoiler alert, they already casted, apparently, um, everyone they needed for the show, or the show is not happening. I would like to think the show is just not happening because, uh, I mean, could you ask for a better host? I mean, <laughs> so that's not happening. Kind, kind of a disappointment, but not really. I mean, I don't know, whatever. I, I'm not that hung up on it. I mean, I'm a little depressed, but I'm okay, okay? Also, please note, before you get extremely triggered at this video, I am going to make a follow-up video on why you should buy a used car over a new car. I think it's only fair to look at both sides of it. I try to always do that when, you know, when making these comparisons. So, that's coming. Keep that in mind before you shred me in the comments. Oh! We got a tangerine scream. Tangerine scream. Who is this? See if we can go catch him. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. Why you should be buying a uh, new over a used car. Uh, the first part is going to be the warranty. The warranty on your car, you know, you get it new, everything is perfect, it's usually 36,000 mile uh, total full coverage and then 60,000 mile powertrain, I think that's what this comes with. Um, so I have 27,000 miles in my car right now and I'm uh, you know, coming up on that, uh, you know, 36,000 mile full coverage, you know, if the navigation screen goes, I'm covered, whatever, uh, totally set. So my point is there is that you have a fixed cost. You know, you pay your down payment on the car if you do that, you pay, if you're leasing the car, you have your lease, you do all this stuff um, and your costs are just, your costs are just predictable. There we go, ST right there. Nice wheels on it, looks great. It's a 15 or 16. So your costs are fixed. You have a you have more peace of mind uh, when you have a car that is brand new. It's it's just it's yours. Anything that happens is going to be taken care of by the dealership, manufacturer warranties, all that stuff. Uh, recalls are always are always done by the manufacturer. So it's just it's a nice it's a nice thing to have. Since I'm low on fuel, we're gonna take a quick intermission and uh, go fuel up. I generally get my fuel at Shell Gas. Uh, I like, I'm sold on their Nitro, whatever it is, nit Nitro V Power, I don't know. I don't know if it makes a difference, it just makes me feel good, and that's important. So, let's fuel up. I'm also gonna use their free vacuums and uh, clean this car up. <sighs> Decided to scrap the idea of uh, vacuuming it out because I'm gonna clean it tomorrow morning, so we'll just do that then. Uh, an idea I just thought of while I was pumping gas, or an example of the uh, warranty coverage. So I had a vibration in the roof of this car literally since I bought it. I mean, this this vibration drove me crazy. And I, I don't know how I even lasted as long as I did listening to it. So I, I recently, just Tuesday, two or three days ago, I took it to Ford. They actually had to keep the car overnight, which was kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, they took care of me. They got me a shuttle to work, from work, picked me up. They took care of it, so Ford, thank you, nice job. About the warranty part of it, if if I, my car was not under warranty, they would have not fixed it. Basically what they had to do, they took the back door panel off, they, it, which led them up to the roof. They took the roof uh, the, you know, apart in here somewhere and uh, re-epoxied it and fixed the uh, whatever it was. I My thought is it was a loose epoxy that was like hitting and it was just bad. So, But it's fixed now and the car feels so solid. Even though it only it was only a sound, it just makes you, it just makes you feel so much better that your car, nothing's wrong, nothing's vibrating, everything sounds good. So an example, it's under warranty, it's covered, I don't have to worry about it. The next thing uh, that I thought of is, is you just have the latest and greatest in your car. You're gonna have emerging technologies in cars. You know, at one point having Bluetooth and navigation was huge. Um, now Apple CarPlay is even becoming more common. Uh, heated, cooled seats. 
there's just you know uh, there's project uh, I don't even know what's look at look ahead I, I don't know when the speed the speedometer is like up on your uh, windshield I can't remember that that what that's called at the moment but you just have all these cool technologies that you get to enjoy on a daily basis and you know you go to work you work hard you, you might not even like your job but at least you can buy a car that has all this stuff that you really enjoy regardless regardless if it's a performance car if it's a hybrid whatever the newest stuff is always going to have the best tech and that's something that I think a lot of you, a lot of us consumers, we become so technology focused that we're going to enjoy and appreciate and know how to use. I even look at things such as satellite radio. I mean, I am never would have thought I would pay for satellite radio, but this car came, the ST came with it for six months, six months with my purchase. And it was kind of great. I got introduced to um, some new stations. Uh, saw, it's just... PGA Tour Radio, I mean, you guys know I like to play golf. I was able to listen to that. I don't know. There was just like a really nice features that I was able to enjoy and take advantage of with the car. And I ended up not renewing it first. In satellite radio, they want you to renew any way they can get you. So they, I eventually renewed and I paid, tw I paid $30 for six months, which was a great deal. So uh, my suggestion to you is if you do get a new car and satellite radio, just let it expire. Let them come back to you. They'll cut the price down substantially. Anytime I'm merging, I don't know about you guys, but anytime I'm merging, you know how there's the solid white line and then it goes to dotted. I hate when people cut over the solid white line. I could... We'll just leave it at that. It's sad. It's... uh. February and I just had to put the air conditioning on because it's 84 degrees outside. Driving and reading, is it the same as texting and driving? Another interesting thing, uh, and this is more for performance cars, uh, even such as the ST, uh, and that is the driving schools that are now coming with a lot of performance cars. You know, before it was like Ferrari, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes. If you bought one of those cars, uh, you were going to be able to go to some type of performance driving school. Whether that meant the driver would take you around or that means you would learn how to drive your car in the fastest way possible and just get better tips and tricks on how to be uh, a better driver brands would offer that and you're not going to get that with a used car now Ford has the Octane Academy which is really cool I haven't been able to do that I'm working on it uh, working some things out there to be able to take advantage of that because after like a year or six months you're not able to do it and I wasn't aware of that so I'm going to work with Ford to see if they'll let me give me an exception uh, to go to their racing academy but my point with a new car that's part of the value of buying it you get to let's just talk about Ford for example you get to go to this Octane Academy you get to drive the Focus ST the Fiesta ST the RS and you don't have to spend that much I mean you can get a Fiesta for under twenty thousand dollars a Fiesta ST and you're able to go to a racing school to get track time and enjoy your car in Utah. Like, how cool is that? Uh, so, you know, yes, you, you get a new car, it does depreciate, but you get a free racing school with it. So maybe you could offset that depreciation with the fact that you are getting to go to a performance driving school and really see what your car can do. Because let's face it, you can push your car as hard as you want on the road, but it's not safe, it's extremely risky, and there's a chance that you total your car or end your life. So it's pro it's probably not worth it. And even so, when, you're, when you think you're pushing it full on the road, you're not, because subconsciously you're telling yourself, okay, I need to slow down here unless you're just stupid I don't know my third point would be knowing the history of the car if you are buying this car or if you're leasing it with the thought of maybe buying it through the end of a lease um, you're gonna know how it was maintained you're gonna have all the records you're gonna know how you drove it when you got the oil changes did you put the right fuel in it did you wash it clean it did you run it through the car wash a million times and rub all the paint off you're just gonna know how it was maintained and and if you, let's say you're on a lease and you're thinking of buying, well, you don't have to worry about what the previous owner did or how it was maintained because you were the one uh, that was in full control. So that's another thing for peace of mind uh, that is really nice. Also, if you are purchasing a new car with, with the idea of keeping it for a very long time, you can keep your records. You can keep from day one what you did to that car. And that's of 
of large value, I think, to the secondhand market where you can hand all this paperwork over and say, here's, here's what I did. And uh, th that, I think, will increase your resale value as well. Now, my final point is speaking with your wallet. We as enthusiasts are always wondering in America, why does, the, why does Europe get the best cars and all these cool hot hatches and special editions and all these cool cars that we don't get? And the reason we don't get them and the reason we don't have as many manual transmissions anymore is not because uh, the dual clutch is fast or anything like that, it's, it's supply and demand. The demand is not there for manual transmissions. You look at a car like the Civic Type R coming to the, to the United States, and it's really a miracle, honestly, that they put that through that it was going to finally come to the United States. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, the manual transmission. The Type R has always had a manual transmission. And in to put a car over $30,000, manual only transmission, and as special as a Type R is for that to come to the United States, is it's, it's a big thing, and we're very lucky to have that. And when I say speak with your wallet, what I mean is you need to show the manufacturers that this is what you want. This, this is what we want as consumers. So you need to buy a new car for them to record these statistics to show that, okay, there is a market for this. The demand is extremely high. We're going to continue to build Type R's and special editions and so forth and so on. So that's what I mean by that. When you buy a Type R secondhand or whatever, that's not recorded to Honda or you know to Porsche that manual transmissions are in high demand or whatever. Uh, Mercedes, I don't even think, offers a manual transmission in the United States right now, which is crazy. So uh, you need to speak with your wallet. Now, being uh, savvy car people, you know, we're constantly checking the market, seeing where cars are at, when they're rising, when they're falling, when's a good time to buy. We are much more educated than the average buyer on purchasing a car and what's a good deal and all of that. And that's a good and a bad thing. The, the good thing is we're getting a deal. The bad thing is we're not purchasing cars new. So as much as we complain about, oh, they should do this or they should make the BRZ with more power, all that stuff, um, you need to buy the car in bulk. For I mean, we need to consume the car as much as possible first to make a business case for the manufacturer to be able to bring those special editions, higher powered cars uh, to us. If we continue to buy used cars, that's just not gonna happen. They're gonna continue to consolidate the special editions, the performance cars, and we're all gonna be in autonomous vehicles and none of us will have cars in the world will end. That's my argument as to why you should, why we should be purchasing new cars. Um, I know that you all want to hear the argument of why you should be buying used cars and that will be in one of my next videos so it's coming soon thank you for uh, tuning in today if you've not liked the video please do so because you're still watching and it's been a while uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe I have some really good content coming up on the ST I know I haven't been uh, covering it as, as closely as I'd like to lately, but it's coming uh, and it's going to be worth your time. You're going to love it. Uh, I'm working on uh, you know, getting some things done. We have a, a review coming up, two reviews that are going to be excellent. Uh, one, a car that's extremely comparable to this. Another is a high-end exotic and I'm going to really spend some time and uh, make a good video for all of you. So uh, really appreciate the support. Again, I've, I've been meeting some of you in public. The Facebook page is starting to blow up a little bit. Um, and when I say blow up, I mean we're working on getting to 200, subscri 200 likes. Uh, but the channel, we just, cre we just crossed 5,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. The next step is 10,000. Like I said, I want to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers, and I think we can do it. My content is kind of narrow. It's the Focus ST, and then I do some reviews and car news. Um, so giving someone a, a reason to subscribe is, is tougher for me because I'm so focused on the focus. <laughs> yeah, I'm currently driving to Golf Galaxy uh, to see if someone turned in my six iron because I was playing golf and I left my six iron on the tee box because I was in between a six and a seven iron and the group, two groups behind me, the guy apparently picked it up and never turned it in. It's like, what the hell are you going to do with a left-handed six iron? So I'm going to check if it's there. If not, uh, I'm going to call Mizuno and get a new six iron. So that's, that's what I'm currently on a mission for. But 
I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. I'm going to go home and watch The Grand Tour. That is my favorite television show. I've been watching Top Gear. I discovered it like er, like tch, 10 plus years ago. I just, as a kid, just loved that show. Uh, just kind of hooked me on, you know, why are these exotic cars be driven by being driven by these guys? Uh, it's very appealing to me. But as far as the platform goes on the new show, this season two has been leaps and bounds better than season one. I mean, it's excellent. It's it's funny. It doesn't feel forced. The new, you know, they do the, the stars driving in the uh, Jaguar F-Type around the half dirt, half uh, cement track. Um, really cool segment. I, I just think it's been great. It's been a great season. I, I'm glad they're continuing to make the show. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. Like the video, and we'll see you soon.